So I noticed something in the recent updates of Bitwig Studio. We got a lot of different devices. As you can see here, we have the EQ Plus or Chorus Plus, Flanger Plus, Phaser Plus and Delay Plus and also Polymer. And when you look at these devices a bit closer, you can see there are some differences in the interface, right? So the Phaser, Flanger and Chorus and EQ Plus look like kind of real native Bitwig devices. I guess, and Delay Plus and Polymer, they look more like um, they are made of grid modules, right? So uh, we see some kind of container device in the background uh, with some kind of grid structure. And in there is here, as you can see, a long delay. And we have here modules from the grid, ADSR, and the filter, and the wavetable module, and so on. And you can even open up the polymer here to a grid structure, and you can see how it's constructed, right? So you can see here the filter is also in here, and the wavetable is in here. But you see more like how it's laid out, and how all these modules are connected. And we have for the chain or for the Bitwig chain, we have here a special container DUI interface, kind of. And the first time I saw this, my first initial uh, thought was that we actually get a container device instead of a synthesizer, um, which wasn't the case. We just got the polymer and we can open up this one in the grid structure and we can replace the certain modules by just using these pull downs here. But you can't really swap the wavetable oscillator to this place and you can't swap the filter to this place or even get a different grid laid out, right? It's not, it's not possible right now. Uh, but my thinking is that we may see in the future, maybe in the next main update, or I don't know, I guess, it, it's just my, my, my thought process. Maybe we get in some time in the future, uh, future we get some kind of container device where we can change the grid layout and can kind of build real uh, devices for the chain itself without having to hassle with the um, GUI interface designer. So I could imagine this kind of hints for the future of uh, the grid. So more like container devices where you can construct everything in the grid and for um, the users that don't want to interact with the grid, you can construct some kind of interface here with these uh, container devices. Um, sadly, you can't open up here the delay plus inside the grid at the moment. I don't know it's, if it's possible in the future. Uh, for the polymer, it's, it's possible and you can, can I think you can convert this to a grid? Yeah, to convert this to a poly grid here. Yeah. Uh, delay plus, it's also not possible here. But you can see it's 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 just a long delay in here, right? So when we, for instance, uh, create an FX grid, um, something like this, and we can use it a long delay switch this here to this mode um, you can see it's it's the same it's the same module right um, but we have some other modules in here also too and some special interface uh, things where I don't know if we get this in the grid too or um, what's the plan for this but for me, it looks really like that we get something like this in the future where we can build devices. So I have no idea. So someone today on Reddit ask, asked how um, um, how we get the Delay Plus into the grid. And my answer was the Delay Plus is a grid device. So it's it doesn't make sense to bring delay plus into the grid because it's already made of grid modules, right? So phaser plus is available in here. I search for this. Yeah. Get the phaser plus in here as a special device because this is not a grid device in the background. So this is my thinking about it. So this, that's why we have grid module for that. So for instance, if you want to have um, here feedback, 
which we don't have on the long delay, you can build this for yourself. So you can do maybe a blend in the front here and bring back the output of this, right? So you can kind of create here an, um, yeah, feedback um, patch. And then we have here, for instance, here the space, which is a diffusion network. And you bring this in, I think, into the feedback loop here. So you do another blend maybe, put this over here, and um, then you bring in maybe an all pass, or well, let's use two all pass devices here, and maybe go into, whoops, go into the all pass here, so in this one, or maybe use um, um, a stereo merge and split something like this, this in there, something like this. And then you blend a dry signal uh, with the wet signal, right? So you have like a diffusion network here separated from the process and you can um, blend this in. So this is this knob here then basically. Um, let me see if I can use this, yeah. Mute all the devices here. So we have this. Maybe we, we need more of these devices here. So we have different networks here and I don't know how these um, networks are constructed, so you can only guess about it. But I think they are also probably uh, constructed out of um, grid modules. So I think we have a lot of Alpas uh, patches uh, in these different uh, diffusion networks here. And uh, But how they are exactly patched out or how they are connected, I don't know. Um, it's hidden basically uh, for us now. Maybe in the future we can get a glance into the delay plus when when they open up the uh, the grid structure behind it. So we get maybe also here um, a window like we have here on the polymer for the delay plus. But I don't know. But you can kind of construct the delay plus inside the grid to some extent. Maybe certain features don't really work that well. For instance, here, um, the update rate maybe or the fade crossfades when changing delay times. It's maybe not that easy to um, realize, um, but it should be possible in some way or the other. So let's actually uh, finish this here a bit more. Um, so we have a diffusion network or some kind of diffusion network. It's probably not the best one, but kind of works. We call this here um, diffusion. And we call this here uh, feedback. And we also have here some EQs, low pass and high pass. Um, low pass. I pass, and I guess this is also used um, before, actually when, yeah, let's use it here. So after it goes back basically to the input here of the delay. So we have these ones here, high pass, low pass, and then we have a ducking. Nope. And in the beta 2, I think we got a change to that we duck actually the wet signal only. And we have the mix knob here. So we have still a mix knob here implemented by the FX grid itself. So we can use this for the mix. And for the ducking here, we just use an, an multiply. Multiply here. 
um, constant by one. So this is basically just the same. It's just a non-change. So the, the, the input is the output. So there's no volume change. Only when I lower here the volume. Um, so then I need, of course, an envelope follower. Because we need to follow the input amplitude here. Maybe we put this, put this here. And then we use basically the, con the constant here and subtract subtract from one because we want to lower the volume. So the shape of the input audio decides how much we subtract from one, which is the zero volume or zero dB volume. And then we um, you see an oscilloscope so we can see. So the output here now is one, um, which is no volume change. And when we input your audio signal, then yeah, you can see the audio signal basically lowers the volume. So we go into that here. And we can also use an oscilloscope here, maybe change this to green. Go to the lower setting, go to that. You can see the green signal here. Green signal is lower in volume than the red signal, which is the signal before we change the volume. And of course we need to change here um, the ducking, which is the amount of ducking. So we can use an attenuate and put this in here. So we can scale the output of the follower. It's at zero. You can see the green um, audio waveform fills exactly the red one. So there's no volume change, so no ducking. So we can use this here. Ducking. But even here in the script patch, we have more possibilities. Here we can only change the amount, but here you can still change also the shape, how it reacts to the audio input. So you can use a rise and attack and decay basically. Uh, what else can we do? Um, can maybe also increase the ducking a bit more by multiplying constant maybe by 1.5 so we have, a, we have a more extreme ducking it's more like a compression arm almost <laughs> It makes no sense, but yeah, you can do stuff like this. So we have a diff diffusion network. We have also implemented here the high pass and low pass. Uh, we have the ducking. We have the feedback knob here. Um, so let's try out here. Actually, it's not right. The feedback is not right because we have here only a blend. Um, we probably need to use here a sum like this and then we use an gain knob here because we have we want to go over 100 percent right so we want to have louder volume going in than it's actually going out um so we can do this here with the volume so zero is basically exactly 100 percent yeah right so you can crank up here the volume more and get more feedback out of it. Maybe we tweak here a bit the uh, diffusion network more. Um, <clears throat> let's give it a try here. So 
So this is the diffusion network 100%. Maybe we switch this here over. Uh, this to that and this to that. So we have the opposite direction. So this is dry, 100% dry. This 100% wet. Okay, nice. So now we bring in here um, maybe a um, small delay to change the pitch. Right, so we have a kind of pitch modulation happening there. And instead for an LFO, I go here for noise, make it stereo, and use uh, a stereo split. So we have the left and right channel, different noise signals. And of course, we need a low pass. Bring this down. And volume, crank it up. We get kind of a more smoother signal. Right, so when I increase here the low pass. See, we have a lot of noisy signal basically, and we reduce it here to our the lower frequencies, so we get a smoother, slower signal, which is still random. And also because it's um, stereo here, we get different signals for left and right, so different noise signals uh, on the left and the right channel. And we call this random. Needs modulation here to left and right. We modulate here maybe this. Ah, oh, let's modulate it to the fullest. And then we can remove that. And we can change the amount here with the volume knob. Maybe also dial in the um, different number, 16 milliseconds, maybe this is 15. We have a small stereo effect. Maybe go here for 33. So you can hear still, uh, there's a small little um, pitch modulation in there and it brings a lot of uh, richness to the sound I think. Let me duplicate this here one, one time. Also do this here by let's go by 100. Okay, so in the Delay Plus we have also here this nice stereo thing where we can make a difference between the left and the right channel by offsetting the channels. Um, <clears throat> maybe there's something I can do here uh, with this. So we have here left and right and we also bring this together here. And then we can, yeah, input here a small delay. Something like this. And delay over here. And then we do here a macro, bipolar, move it here over. Just Zero dot, I don't know, five, that's uh, maybe too much. Two, maybe also too much. One. Let's see, yeah, uh, minus. Uh, so we can dial in basically the difference on the left and the right.
What's this called here? Detune. So we also do here a macro. Call this gain. Or oh, this we call feedback. So we go slightly above here. Not too much. You know what happens. Maybe a bit more. Let's use a macro here for diffusion. It's this one. There's a macro for High cut and low cut, low cut. Or maybe do it also this way. This is low pass, high pass. So we have two, these two knobs here. We have the feedback knob. With the mix knob, panning is missing. Oh yeah, ducking. Um, this is down here. And we have a white knob. So we can use stereo width here at the end. We can crank it up to 200%. Yes. Or maybe go to bipolar so we can use it here as a double click thing. 100%. So um, if you double click, it's 100%. If you go down, it's mono. If you crank it up, it's 200% width. can't replicate yet the interface of, of the module inside here of the, of the macro knobs of course it's not possible but you know just trying to make an example here So it's basically an, yeah, how do I put it? A poor man's delay plus. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Leave a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Maybe think about the Patreon subscription. And you can download this preset, of course, in the description below. Have some fun with it. And I hope you learned something. And i uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye.